Howdy from the great state of Texas. And we're gonna be testing this Polestar 2 battery electric vehicle. Now, what is Polestar? Well, Polestar was formerly the performance division of Swedish automaker Volvo. But in 2017, they were spun off to become their own brand focused on hybrid electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles. And that's what we have here today. So first, Howdy from Texas. Now, over the next few days, we'll be testing the Polestar for its overall driving experience, the handling, as well as what it's like to live with on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of interior comfort and convenience, the infotainment system and technology, as well as what it's like in terms of efficiency and charging the Polestar 2. In terms of what you get with the Polestar 2, there are three available variants. The base variant starting at $50,000 is a single motor configuration with a 275 kilowatt motor. That is good for a range of roughly 320 miles, 335 horsepower as well. This model that we have here is the dual motor long range variant, and that includes a 310 kilowatt motor, as well as a range of 276 miles, 546 pound-feet of torque and 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. The base model gets 0 to 60 in roughly five and a half seconds. And then there is a closely related variant to this model here, which is the performance variant. That is also a dual motor, 335 kilowatt, 546 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in four seconds. So does this Polestar 2 have what it takes to make it here in Texas, the land of big trucks, where roughly every year, 70% of new cars sold in the state of Texas are SUVs and pickup trucks. So this is quite a tall order for a vehicle like this here in the Lone Star State, but let's see if it will hold up to the demands of Texas as well as the hot Texas heat. So let's begin with the most obvious detail of the Polestar 2 and that is its styling. Now the Polestar 2 really sort of deviates from the trend of EVs where this is more of an angular shaped type of vehicle, whereas most EVs are a very sort of curved and smooth flowing sort of silhouette uh, and that's designed to really maximize efficiency so that the vehicle can really achieve the most uh, the, or the maximum amount of range whereas the Polestar 2 really relies on sort of more of an edgy type of look uh, there's no real sort of smooth sort of flowing lines with it very sort of hard creases along the vehicle especially here along the belt line and then all the way to the shoulder right here you've got these large sort of rectangular patterns all across the vehicle and that's a good thing because the Polestar 2 has a very distinct look. Now, it does have some relationship with its Swedish counterpart, Volvo, where you can see this Thor's hammer treatment on the headlight. You'll see that on Volvo vehicles as well. But overall, this is a very unique looking vehicle. And I can confirm that because in my couple of days of driving the Polestar 2, I've been asked about this vehicle by a couple of people in terms of what it is and whether I like the vehicle. So you're getting a very unique vehicle with the Polestar 2 in terms of its styling. In terms of overall appearance, the Polestar 2 is a really handsome vehicle, very tidy look to it. It has a good mix of aggressiveness, but also really sort of something that is something that's not going to offend people or really sort of put people off in terms of its overall appearance. And it doesn't go too far in terms of trying to convey an EV vibe. I think that Polestar has really struck a nice balance in terms of really making it look like a car that you might see on the road typically, but giving it something that's also very unique that might, pe might make people take a second look at it. Now, one of the things I do take issue with is this wheel gap here. It is quite a large wheel gap, and I do think that sort of detracts from the appearance. Now, I can understand some of the rationale behind it. Obviously, these EVs have big batteries in them, and you're going to feel that when the car is driving over certain types of hard bumps, you're going to really feel that heavy battery, that large heavy battery, really affect the center of gravity. So by boosting the car, obviously you can dampen that effect quite a bit. And that looks like what Polestar has done here. But I think in terms of my own personal preference, I would lower this car by about two inches to give it more of an aggressive look. The other consideration to keep in mind is that crossovers are quite popular right now. So the high stance really could be to cater to the buyer who wants an EV, but also wants the benefit of a higher seating position to get more of a view of the road. So that could really be sort of what's behind the Polestar's high stance. 
But overall, the silhouette of the vehicle is really nice, really compact dimensions. And again, uh, one of those things where it doesn't have sort of these really sort of aggressive curves, very angular. And I think that's really a good thing. Again, a departure from what you might see with EVs, with some of the oddball styling that some people have complained about and that even manufacturers have chosen to rethink. In terms of the front grille, uh, it is blocked off because it is an EV. There is no motor in terms of uh, in terms of needing the type of ventilation to cool it. So you've got really sort of this squared off look right here. Uh, again, a nice aggressive look. I think it would be sort of, you know, well served to have a little bit more character in the front end. It does look a little bit sort of generic, like some of those sort of insurance commercials that you see sometime with the generic sort of looking vehicle. You know what it is, but they can't put the actual vehicle mark on it for copyright purposes. And that sort of seems to be a little bit of what's happening here with the Polestar 2. In terms of wheel setup, the Polestar 2 has 245, 45, 19 series tires on it. And these are Michelin Primacies. And it's a really nice combination, even though it is a fairly aggressive tire profile. Um, but in terms of handling, the Polestar 2 really handles well with these tires in driving it, especially spirited driving. The car goes exactly where I point the steering wheel. When going over bumps, even hard bumps, you really don't feel any harsh sort of shocks uh, inside the vehicle or even in terms of uh, the feedback through the steering wheel. So Polestar has done really well to uh, apply this tire package to the Polestar 2. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that because EVs carry big, heavy batteries, uh, to have such an aggressive uh, tire uh, might be a questionable decision, but it looks like these Michelin Primacies really work well with this Polestar 2. Another feature that the Polestar 2 has along the front, it has a front mounted camera and radar system. And that system is designed to handle lane keeping, adaptive cruise control, as well as collision avoidance. And it really does work quite well in terms of helping the car maintain its sort of lane keeping, as well as the adaptive cruise control. I did find that uh, during the twilight hours, sort of roughly around sunset when there are shadows on the road, that the, uh, the adaptive cruise control would trigger false positives where sometimes the car would accelerate. So if you are using the adaptive cruise control on the Polestar 2, make sure that you are actively engaged while driving because uh, this system appears to sort of, uh, you know, uh, again, trigger some false positives where it will accelerate uh, and maintain a closer distance than you might find comfortable. One of the things I did take issue with with the Polestar is the fact that it has sort of this badging on it that says Polestar 2, 78 kilowatt hour, 310 kilowatts. I really think that's just going too far. It's an unnecessary detail to put on the vehicle. Uh, actually corny, in my opinion. Uh, they didn't have to really resort to this sort of sticker treatment right here. I think it really detracts from the vehicle overall. In terms of the rear treatment, there is a minimalist look here that really keeps in line with the rest of the vehicle styling. You've got the light bar that really sort of ends in sort of this um, door handle type of shape or sort of horseshoe type of shape, but very much in line with the styling of the vehicle overall. You've got this flat glass here on the back of the Polestar 2. Uh, that really does impact rear visibility. I'll talk more about that uh, in my driving experience with the Polestar 2, uh, but that's something to keep in mind when you are driving this vehicle in terms of your blind spots and then overall just being able to uh, to maneuver the car in and out of spaces, especially since the Polestar 2 has this really high deck lid. Um, one, just naturally that's what it is, but then also made even higher by the high, high ride height of the Polestar 2. And then here we are, you've got this sort of hatchback type of treatment with the Polestar 2, uh, really nice interior volume, good depth as well. Uh, to keep in mind, you have the high lift over, so for heavy bags, that is going to be a problem. Uh, and you can see uh, some scuffs uh, because of the high lift over. But in terms of the overall cargo, you're able to get uh, two medium-sized suitcases in or one large suitcase, one medium-sized suitcase in here, uh, and that will uh, handle cargo quite well, as well as the pass-through uh, into the interior right here. Just pull that down and push through and you'll be able to get to the interior of the Polestar 2. 
So the Polestar 2 has what's called the charcoal zinc, this particular model right here. The exterior, it's what's called stealth black. Uh, it is using uh, recycled materials right here. So this is a, a fabric feel to it. Uh, and then you've got this nice texture pattern. It's really nice to the touch. Uh, on the sort of a surface panel right here, uh, you've got this uh, recycled material. It doesn't feel plastic. It doesn't feel fabric. Um, it's, it's a very unique texture, but very high quality. And then there's a center mounted speaker, which gives a nice sound stage if you're into audio. A little bit light on the bass, but overall, very good. Uh, this is a piano finish, um, so it does show fingerprints, as you can see here, as well as dust. Um, so it's, you know, uh, if, if that's a real consideration, um, something to be mindful of in terms of uh, durability in terms of scratches, but then also fingerprints as well. And then again, this nice textured finish as well. You've got this kind of high console, and then here there is a pocket uh, to store small items, whether it's a small, whether it's a smartphone or keys. Uh, the same is on the opposite side. So the Polestar 2 also uh, has this sort of movable armrest right here. There is one cup holder, uh, which I thought was a little unusual when I first. Uh, got the car but then uh, when you open the armrest here uh, you have a second cup holder which is pretty clever so that the uh, driver can obviously adjust the armrest to his or her liking but if there's another passenger then uh, allows uh, for two cups to be placed and they're quite large uh, the couplers are quite large uh, so that's very nice to have now there are no usb ports inside this console uh, but that's okay because you have two in the rear as i showed earlier as well as the two usb ports up front uh, so very clever design uh, by polestar with the armrest and it's got a pretty firm feel here as well uh, which is uh, quite nice uh, if you leave it up it will stay like that and also um sort of folds into the back seat so you can completely flip it upright as well which is pretty cool feature there and then it has a soft close uh, so it's not flimsy by any means not rattly as well and good for the driver to be able to make adjustments as necessary uh, depending on whatever is most comfortable for his or her arm in terms of the rear of the Polestar 2, it's quite comfortable. I'm average height, 175 centimeters. Uh, it's a really comfortable seat. Uh, the nice thing is that this seat uh, does have good under thigh support. Typically, that's a problem in EVs because uh, the large battery pushes the legs up. But uh, the Polestar 2 doesn't seem to have that problem uh, where there is good under thigh support. There's also really good uh, footwell support as well. I've got some fairly tall shoes on and I'm able to slide my feet under the seat. So it's quite comfortable. And then the overall seat cushioning is very supportive as well. So to get uh, adults in the vehicle won't be a problem, especially roughly six feet one, um, sort of roughly around 180 centimeters or 185 centimeters won't be a problem in this vehicle at all. And not bad for a fairly long ride, I would say, uh, to accommodate. Uh, two passengers, two adult passengers in the rear. As you can see, Polestar has ample room for taller passengers. Uh, again, that's a function of, again, the design of the vehicle. Uh, fairly tall uh, in terms of overall silhouette. So uh, that's a good thing for taller passengers who are in the rear of the Polestar 2. And then you've got these um, really sort of nice ventilation knobs right here. A very high quality feel to them. Uh, they have a sort of clicking sensation, very firm movement as well. Uh, so really nice what Polestar has done here. And then they also elevate up and down. And in the rear, you get a USB-C, two USB-C ports in the back. So that's very nice uh, for the Polestar 2 to be, to be able to accommodate devices for two adults or two passengers in the rear of the vehicle. There is a center hump. Uh, in the Polestar 2. So if there are multiple passengers, adult passengers, this is not going to be a comfortable ride. Also, there is a uh, fairly pronounced uh, sort of hump or protrusion from the back seat. And so that's gonna be quite uncomfortable for anyone sitting in the middle, uh, particularly an adult. So I'm setting off in this Polestar P2. Turn right. Everything that I'm experiencing uh, is for the first time. So you'll get a true first impression we're in Austin, Texas, as I mentioned earlier. I'm just gonna go check out the city and uh, bounce around to some 
uh, old spots from when I used to live here, but we're gonna do it in this Polestar P2. And uh, yeah, let's see what we get from it. So um, the first impression when I first picked it up was the throttle response was pretty slow on it. Um, and I'm not sure if that's a function of the driving profile on it. Um, I've got it in normal driving mode right now. Uh, there is a sport mode with it, but yeah, off the line, uh, it is a bit slow to start up. So uh, as I get more familiar with the car, I'll be able to give a, a better sense of uh, what the car really does. One of the other really nice things about this car is how quiet it is also. Um, so I've got the temperature set to uh, 72 degrees or roughly 23 Celsius. And uh, the car is, is really quiet. You don't hear any wind noise coming off the car. Um, it, it's really nice. Even the tires, uh, that's one of the complaints about EVs is because uh, there is no motor. Uh, you often hear the tires, but that is not the case in this car. I'm driving roughly about 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour right now. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a very quiet ride. And also the car feels really solid as well. Um, I did adjust the steering on it to be firm. That's that's my liking, um, more of a sport feel when driving any car. Uh, and you have the ability to do that in this Polestar too. But in, in, the, in the first eight kilometers that I've had it, I feel like it's set up right. Um, the visibility out of the front of the car is really nice also. And yeah, just a, a really solid feel. Um, I wouldn't sort of you know, compare it to anything uh, in terms of other cars I've driven, but uh, it's, it's got its own character. It, it is confidence inspiring. I haven't driven it much yet, but I'll be able to give a better sense of, of how confident I feel driving the car and, and, uh, as, we, as we get more time behind the wheel. As we wrap up this detailed look at the specifications, interior and exterior of the Polestar 2, there's still so much more to explore. In part two of our review, we'll take you behind the wheel to experience its driving dynamics, do a detailed look into the Polestar 2's infotainment system, technology, and convenience features, and see how well it fares in terms of charging and efficiency. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned.